I'll go ahead and call us to order and declare that we have a quorum of five members present. Uh, we should have six momentarily, and uh, Mrs. Barrett uh, will not be joining us. Uh, she has assured me she will watch this on uh, line, and then we'll forward any questions to you, Dr. Ely. Uh, she had, uh, well, a family issue come up and sends her regrets and apologies, uh, and then if appropriate, you can send any answers or copy uh, everyone as appropriate. Certainly. Uh, so with that, item C1, consideration and discussion <clears throat> related to elementary boundary adjustment. Dr. Ely. Uh, Mr. President, members of the board, just uh, wanted to remind everybody as to why we are here uh, for um, contemplating a, a boundary adjustment for our elementary schools, uh, Head Start, Pre-K uh, through fourth grade uh, campuses and College Station ISD. We're doing that, so we have to accommodate the opening of Riverbend Elementary School, which will open in August uh, of 2019. So uh, we find ourselves here needing to uh, take the kiddos that we have in College Station ISD in nine of our elementary schools and apportion them, uh, reapportion them, <clears throat> excuse me, into 10 elementary schools. So oh, we're doing it uh, now early in the school year before implementation uh, because we wanted to wait and make sure we knew the maximum uh, and had the greatest amount of information available to us uh, to be able to make uh, good projections uh, off into the future, uh, especially with the new school that is opened in town. So we have uh, uh, we've gone through and given our uh, information to our demographer and they've given information back to us and we uh, uh, will have a recommendation here for you uh, shortly. But, uh, I would like for uh, Mr. Mike Martindale, Deputy Superintendent and Chief Financial Officer, talk a little bit more about the process uh, and the various aspects of the recommendation we'll be bringing towards you uh, for uh, bringing to you, excuse me, this evening. Mr. Martindale. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Thank you, Dr. Lee. That's before Mr. Glenwick started yelling at me. I thought it was on, Chuck. Sorry. As Dr. Ely mentioned, why are we adjusting our elementary school boundaries. Well, in the 2015 bond package, uh, the voters included $24 million for elementary number 10. Elementary 10 has been named Riverbend Elementary, located on Rock Prairie West in South Holloman. It will open next school year, August 2019. These are our current boundaries. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. There's a lot of cover, colors on here, nine different ones, as a matter of fact, for our, our nine existing elementary schools. Again, these are our current boundaries. Uh, not going to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, the, the adjustments that we'll be recommending to accommodate the opening of uh, River Bend, I'll go through slide by slide, any particular changes uh, to our current boundaries. A lot of, lot of data on this particular slide, so I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm on, we're going to try our pointer here. So in this particular chart, of course, we have uh, our elementary schools. And um, our capacity numbers that go with that particular campus. We also did the math to determine our uh, capacity numbers. 85% and 110%, these are directly from uh, policy FC local. 85% is what we look at, see if we're utilizing uh, enough of this space, 110% is when we start uh, taking note that uh, maybe we're over capacity and need to address some things. The enrollment numbers utilized in this particular study and making our projections came from September 4th of this year. So it's a couple of weeks into this school year. Again, as Dr. Ely mentioned, it was so that we could have the most accurate data as far as reflecting what impact uh, an additional campus opening uh, this school year had on our enrollment. This is just the math of the existing or September 4th enrollment relative to uh, our capacity number that we used and also we included our percent low SES. So if you just glance at this, I underlined the most extremes for us right now, College Hills, just shy of the 110% mark. Greens Prairie is over that. And Pebble Creek, you can see, is trending or is currently at 68% of its capacity number 
uh, some others to notice. Forest Ridge is, is starting to tick up on us a little bit. Creek View as well as Southwood Valley are running right at that 85% number. These are our out year projections using that September 4th data from Templeton demographers. The, where we coded it, uh, the red shows where we've exceeded the 110% capacity. We knew that's coming from the previous slide because we already had College Hills uh, trending at 109%. So you can anticipate that because it was right there. Creek View was 84% on the previous slide, so you can see it hovers probably in the 80% before it moves out uh, uh, beyond that 85%. Uh, Greens Prairie was already at 112%. Forest Ridge was 105%. As you can see in the out years, it exceeds that 110% uh, fairly quickly. It's projected next year, actually. Pebble Creek at 423, again, 68% capacity. I mentioned Southwood Valley as well, because it was right 84.4%, I believe, and these are projected out. So the colors, uh, using the shading colors kind of tells the story. Uh, College Hill is, is full, real close to being over capacity. Forest Ridge will be in, there in the near future. Greens Prairie is now, and uh, we have uh, significant space at Pebble Creek right now. Southwood Valley and Creek View are just right there at that 85% mark. Can I, so the red is over 110? Over yes. 110, yes, sir. And green below 85. And the green is below 85. Thank you. So if we just kind of take a look at those numbers and uh, the needs that we identified from looking at that data. Obviously, with our boundary adjustment, as we mentioned, the primary driver is we've, we've got a new school we're opening. We need to put kids in it. So to add students to Riverbend for next August. Oh, we're running the 68% at Pebble Creek, so we have capacity to, to work with there. Uh, College Hills and Greens Prairie are already running uh, right at the 110, if not over. And we need to make note also of Forest Ridge. If you notice that it was hitting, it became red in 2019. So those are the, um, the, the, the items that we identified as we uh, came up with our recommendation. Of course, to uh, build capacity for River Bend, uh, get some kiddos in Pebble Creek, and be cognizant of the fact that College Hills, Springs Prairie, and Forest Ridge are some enrollments we need to, to generate some room in. There's administration's recommendation for next year. Uh, don't try to, I'm going to go slide, there's still another 20 slides. So <laughs> we're going to go 19, something of that nature. We will go, we have a slide for ever change relative to our current zones, okay? So don't get too hung up. This will we'll come back around to this one. This is just a huge overview. So the, what I will uh, mark out for you is River Bend, is the, is the brown here. So uh, that's, that's the, the big piece. Uh, here's uh, Welburn Road running for you, just to give you some landmarks. Here's uh, Greens Prairie, Pecan Trail, and Welburn Middle School, just to give you some relation. So we will go through each one of these uh, and highlight all changes relative to our current boundaries. Okay, areas changing. I'm gonna start down here. There, there are no recommended changes to Southwood Valley's current boundaries. River Bend will pull students from six campuses, South Knoll, some from Greens Prairie's current zone, Spring Creek, Rock Prairie, Creek View, and Forest Ridge. And again, we will touch on every one of those here as we move through our presentation. There are three other adjustments that are part of our recommendation as well to address those other identified needs we had earlier, uh, movement, to Pebble Creek of some students from College Hills. And again, uh, we'll, we'll zero in on this area here momentarily to show you exactly what that looks like. Uh, to Spring Creek 
from current forest ridge, this small area right here, this is 40, and Victoria, again, we'll drill down on that so you can see it much better. And two Greens Prairie, currently forest ridge, this particular development, future development right here. Outside of River Bend, there are just three adjustments. And I touched on these on the last slide, and we'll get into them as well. But just to point out that those uh, addressing some of the other areas of need, uh, not necessarily with kiddos going to River Bend. So three non-River Bend adjustments to address some capacity things. Okay, we're going to go school by school that's impacted as we build uh, River Bend's um, zone. So to River Bend, and this is from South Knoll, okay? River Bend is all this kind of light brown area, including this, we'll touch on this space and this one later. But from South Knoll, it is all current South Knoll zone from Welburn Road, here's Welburn Road right here, west. So everything that South Knoll from Welburn Road West will become a part of River Bend. That's the impact with South Knoll. From Forest Ridge, so area just right here where we are right now, to kind of just give you kind of a vantage point, this is Consol, okay? So this would be to River Bend from currently Forest Ridge. This particular is uh, Welsh on the eastern side, 2818. Goes right here, 2818. Up Welburn, and the northern part of it is Southwood Valley. So it's all this Southwest area. Parkway. Excuse me, Southwest Parkway. Southwest Parkway. So this will become a part of River Bend also currently part of Forest Ridge. Okay, any questions on that one? Again, this is this is where we are basically right now, Consol and Welsh Avenue. To River Bend from Greens Prairie. So this is areas of current Greens Prairie zone west of Welburn. Everything west of Welburn with the southern border down here, see if I can, you, Mr. Nugent, you need it? right here. You want me to do it? I, I got it. Okay. From Brazos River starting in the southwest corner along ba uh, Bats Ferry Road. This is Mentor Springs Road. Straub was here to ING, and just up to that, that's the former crossing at Straub Road. And then it, you can see it cuts back up with Welburn. So everything currently Greens Prairie west of Welburn with the southernmost portion being what we've identified here. This Bats Ferry Road, Mentor Springs Road, Straub, ING, and Straub down in this particular area. Goes to um, River Bend from Greens Prairie. From Spring Creek, current Spring Creek zone, is this area right here. Again, this is all makes up River Bend. Two River Bend from Spring Creek. This is all of the current Spring Creek zone, Western Welburn Road. So this is currently Spring Creek. We're recommending this become River Bend. Here's Welburn Road. So this entire area west. Just to give you some, th this is River Bend Elementary right here. Again, Con Trail, Greens Prairie, Welburn Middle School, just to give you some bearing as to where things are. <clears throat> From Rock Prairie to River Bend, this is really the kind of the northern portion of Edelweiss Gardens. So I'll it's this little area right here off of Welburn Road, and the boundaries for that start in the northeast corner. That's Victoria. So really what you're looking at here is Creek View, 
and uh, Cypress Grove. So if that kind of gives you some bearing. So this is Northeast Port. This is Victoria down to Eagle. This is Eagle. More about this particular area. We're going to touch on that on the next slide, this lighter brown or gray. But Eagle, this goes uh, to Highway uh, 40 to Welburn Road. And the northern part of this is Graham. So we would capture this particular area currently at Rock Prairie to be a part of River Bend. In this small section, it is currently um, zoned to Creek View. So we would capture that as well and uh, bring to River Bend. That's Oldenburg and Klein Streets. And that feeds right out onto Eagle there on the south end. In, in the That's the boundary, previous one. I'm not sure. In the boundary adjustment prior uh, in 2013 for the opening of Spring Creek, that planning area um, where Oldenburg and Klein Streets right there uh, is, and if you look to the southeast across Eagle, that was all one planning area. It was not bisected. And so we, at that time, didn't we we couldn't yeah. break it apart our demographers didn't do it at the time we didn't think to do it whatever but we we broke it apart last time uh for the previous rezoning that we did earlier in the year so now we were able to pull just those little two streets out and make it more of a, a harder line with with eagle with there. eagle this is creek view so that's what it was i guess as a planning parcel previous planning area was all together mm -hmm. yeah Okay, those were the uh, recommendation to build River Bend uh, zone. These are the three additional to address some of our capacity issues and, and those type of things, even those created as we build River Bend and just some adjustments. This would be to Pebble Creek from current College Hills. Okay, so uh, this is Highway 6. And if you will, this is this is the mall right in here. So maybe kind of give you a little bearing. So this is Highway so all 6. All the kids who live there would be going to Pebble yeah. Creek. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Highway 6, this south border, Southwest Parkway. And this goes to uh, Dartmouth up to Holloman Drive East. This parcel does run, run right along the uh, mall property line to Harvey Road. This is Harvey Road right here. It's north on Scarlet O'Hare to University Oaks. Pebble Creek already has this area zoned to them. So we would be recommending capturing this, extending that a little farther north to add a little more capacity to Pebble Creek and uh, give us a little breathing room at College Hills. So this really connects to an existing area that's zoned to Pebble Creek. To Spring Creek from Forest Ridge, we took quite a we took kids to help over in River Bend uh, from Spring Creek and then Forest Ridge. If you remember, was beginning to have some projected capacity in the out year, some issues getting full. So this is to address some of that. So we'll get our bearings here. Here's Fitch. College Station High School would be sitting right here. This is to Spring Creek from Forest Ridge. Here's Spring Creek Elementary. Here's Forest Ridge. This is all Castlegate. One. One, Castlegate two starts in this area. So part of our recommendation that all the streets off of Victoria between Fitch, starting right here, and down to Wallace Phillips. So we'd be capturing these kiddos that are currently Forest Ridge, Spring Creek. It actually, Spring Creek is geographically even closer than Forest Ridge is for this particular uh, part of the neighborhood. Greens Prairie 
two grains prairie from forest ridge so we took a pretty good chunk of uh, area out of greens prairie zone for river bend and again try and address some of the out years at forest ridge this is the the margraves development greens prairie reserve i think is actually the name of the development so we capture this area here's forest ridge again here is uh, greens prairie so we would uh, recommend this particular planting area to go to Greens Prairie from Forest Ridge. <clears throat> so all of those brings us back to our recommended. Those were the changes uh, from current to what we are recommending. Again, College Hills, see it's up here in the yellow. The red star signifies the elementary schools. Okay, so uh, Creek Views right here, kind of midtown area. Creek Views, the red, Cypress Grove, the yellow. So right in this particular area, Forest Ridge. Now uh, all the blue. This Castle Gate One minus the, the area we just spoke of. They also have uh, some area zoned up north here. Uh, Greens Prairie. Captured all here. We spoke about the southernmost boundary of River Bend earlier. River Bend is the brown, all of this. Rock Prairies in Midtown, we captured a little bit of their current zone for River Bend. Uh, South Knoll, so right here on both sides of Six in Texas. And if you remember, South Knoll captured a lot of this space out here as well. Southwood Valley and uh, Spring Creek. Kind of difficult to see. It's the gray in here. Ten schools are running out of colors. So. Yeah. <laughs> this is what our data, our numbers look like with these particular zones projected out. Here's 1920 next year. So remember correctly, I counted um, five schools in the 500 range, four in the six, and River Bend would open with approximately 438 kids next year. And currently, if you remember, College Hills is up over seven, as well as Greens Prairie. And our out year numbers uh, cleans us up with Forest Ridge quite a bit. Um, Creek View was uh, running at the 84% mark previously. Greens Prairie was over capacity, if you remember, already at 112, so it gives us some time with Greens Prairie. Pebble Creek was under. Uh, it grows fairly fast if the particular planting areas in that south area come to fruition. They are accounted for in here. Um, River Bend and Rock Prairie uh, will be running below the 85% as well as Southwood Valley. It's at 84 now. So um, this particular scenario would position us with capacity. It, it position us from an elementary standpoint, pretty good place for the distant future. I would share this with the board as well, just the percent of his economically disadvantaged kids per campus utilizing these zones. Uh, College Hills at 60, South Knoll 59, and Southwood Valley at 53. So you can see here's College Hills, uh, South Knoll, Southwood Valley. Uh, and we'd have uh, Rock Prairie at 45, Creek View here a little farther south at 40, River Bend at 39, and then Forest Ridge 29, Pebble Creek 25, Spring Creek 19, and Greens Prairie 18. We would recommend that uh, students entering fourth grade next year who would be impacted by the zones uh, may elect a grandfather. So this is current year third graders, 18, 19, 
third graders may move next year to fourth grade if they were impacted by the rezoning and they chose to stay at the campus they're at now, they would be allowed to through grandfathering. I'm going to hold up there real quick. This is just letting everyone know all of this information will be posted, of course, as we conclude uh, this evening. The maps, our presentation, uh, our uh, scheduled meeting, our public uh, forums for Wednesday at noon and Thursday at 5.30, as well as our next meeting next Monday at 6 o'clock. So be happy to back up. Take questions, whatever you guys would like. Thank you. Are you going to give us a copy of the? It doesn't have to be right now, but I've got a, right now. I, I've got a copy just of the map that the that's there. We'll have everything posted on the website, Chuck. This evening. Yeah, everything with the video will come later, but we can get that stuff posted. So, but yes, we can give you a copy if you would like to see a map of it right now. It's just the map that we showed everybody else to pass those around. <clears throat> with the information that was here, did the demographers take anything in consideration due to the charter school? Or was it just the data that, or did that did, have this, any impact this, on it? That's why he collected this data on September the 4th, so we could see what happened the first two weeks of the school year. So there, and of course, Dr. E. Lee can correct me if I misstate this, but um, the past work they have done in other districts that experience a charter opening shows uh, you have that one-year impact and then it kind of, it, it, you return to kind of your normal growth rate because those kids are, are now out of the system, so to speak. That's at the system level, at the, at the district level. But yes, they did take into account uh, the impact uh, of that and, and <clears throat> have tempered some of their, uh, you know, previous year um, growth projections uh, based on that. So just out of curiosity, um, at the projected enrollment um, numbers, I think it was Forest Ridge went up and then went back down. Yes. What are the, they, I'm just curious as to why. That could be a particular cohort that's pretty good size, a particular grade level that's working its way through the system. I remember correctly, those those cohort effects are much bigger. We see those much bigger at the elementary zones than we have a tendency to see them at the other zones. Which is why With, sometimes we see that much bigger, all of a sudden things stop and then all of a sudden go up really big it's because they're just larger groups of kids in a neighborhood for whatever reason. And you're dividing the entire district up ten ways instead of two ways or three ways, which can smooth that out a little bit. Can you zoom in a little bit on the area right there, what I'll call the northern forest ridge piece? And what is that little sliver right in there? The, the little kind of t uh, light tan square? Mm -hmm. That Southgate Village apartment complex is Creek. that. Creek. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, you're not going to be able to do that unless you go out of that. And Well, I was... Uh, or you can just, I mean, what I'm, there's that little different colored piece right above yes, it. What's cool? That, I'm having trouble drawing at Southgate, it. At Southgate Village, and they go to um, Creekview as they have since Creekview opened. Uh, okay. So speaking. there's no there's no change. Oops. Okay. Hang on. I'm a new driver on this thing. <laughs> you're, Mr. Harris, you're speaking of this area right here, correct? Uh, just the, right there. The light colored one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Creekview. Okay. Yeah, it is hard to tell the color. Yes, sir. So that is no change. Yeah, I would like a printout of 
all the sheets, particularly those with the number of projections. Okay. I, I will make a general comment, uh, obviously subject to thoroughly going through it uh, since this is my first time to see it, as it is everyone here except for the two of you, I think. Um, I'm impressed with this. You, I think, did a great job of filling up a school that's brand new, and it doesn't look terribly disruptive. Uh, obviously, for those who are impacted and being asked to make a change, it will be, but I... I think it's, uh, I would say, better than I thought we might get because of some of the realities we face. So that's my gut reaction to it. Um, anybody else have questions? I'm not trying to rush anybody, but if you do, I mean, I it clearly it's a lot to digest. And as we dig into it, and there are a few things... It, that will come up. One, I, I did want to maybe ask you on the line between, I guess it's Spring Creek and Forest Ridge. They're in the neighborhood. Yes, sir. Is that kind of a natural break? I mean, are we? This is a green belt. Okay. Right here. Yes, sir. Okay. And there's the lake over there. Kind of. Yeah, mm -hmm. your um, lake is <laughs> right here. Geographically, yes, sir. Yes, I have. Yes, sir. That is uh, e even for I. I would think it's a fair statement that a, a kiddo would like to walk or bike. This is a. This is Victoria. And then you go to the corner of W. S. Phillips Parkway right here. This is a four-way stop, and up the hill just a little bit, and Spring Creek sitting there. Coming this direction to Forest Ridge, you'll have to loop around and cut through the neighborhood to get to the footpath. And then in the bottom piece there where we're seeing the tip of it, I guess it's all that one contiguous piece. It, Margaret. Yeah, Margaret, is that all new development? Do we have any existing... There's, yeah, there's, um, there is like a, a house or a portion of a street that's there. Yes. Look. Okay. And do we Look. know, I, I mean, I know we, we at one point, I can't think who all was here at that point where we had a, a, an elementary rezoning and we literally had one kid that was impacted from an area and we ended up, I guess it was granting a, a waiver to deal with something like that where we didn't think. It made sense, left the neighborhood, but just moved the one kid. Um, just so if we do have something like come up, like that come up, that is an option. We have transfer uh, processes um, and application process for that, for that and any number of reasons. So that's, that's why we have those in place. I, 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 I think it looks good. I mean, I think you take a look at those numbers going out. I mean, I, I guess the, the one that surprised me was our uh, lowest current elementary school is going to be the first one over capacity, uh, assuming all the racetrack stuff comes through, right? I mean, and that's what we'll see. We'll see. So... The two largest developments that have made this, I mean, a little bit more challenging are obviously the Green Spray Reserve uh, and how many kids could come out of there and how quickly they would come. And the same thing with Southern Point. Um, how quickly um, will it happen and how many kids will come out of there? And so um, those, you'll see how the, this impacting this current recommendation here with with, with Pebble Creek and um, obviously now Green's Prairie. So. Um, as with all development, that's kind of the great unknown. So what you did was instead of counting on that future development there, you chose to pull kids from the overcrowded College Hills, also replace some of the 
low SES that we lost when Windsor Point went back to student housing. So it's an extension of that area, if you will, and just move them instead of counting on the future growth. That is the exact conversation, Mr. Harris, that we had. We asked ourselves, does, does Pebble Creek need more students now? And the answer in our estimation was yes. And certainly does College Hills need to reduce students now? And that was, that was a no-brainer. Um, we asked ourselves, could we wait on the development in the southern part of the district at Southern Point um, for it to naturally fill up Pebble Creek? Or can we move some students in there now or both? And we, we kind of decided to do a little bit of both to make go ahead and move kids in there uh, now to relieve the, the crowding at College Hills. And then we will continue to monitor the implementation uh, of that particular development in the southeast portion of the district. Can you go back to the picture? Yes, sir. Are those areas the, the northern piece for Pebble Creek? Are those... I'm trying to think of the right terminology. Good lines. I mean, we're not splitting a neighborhood. Are those like defined complexes or a neighborhood versus an apartment complex? You can go back. Yeah, that's it. Are you, are you talking about this one? Mm -hmm. I thought you were talking about somewhere else. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the area okay. I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes, those are those uh, are not splitting apartment complexes or anything like that. If you go. Uh, yeah, between Briarwood and Plantation Oaks, you can see that they're labeled there, uh, those particular uh, complexes. And if you see that line there, um, we see where it says Sonoma, uh, Huntington, Falcon Point, all those, that's behind those apartment complexes, so they're yeah. not being split. Um, and then if yeah, you think about that, that, that lowest rectangle down there, if you will, that's Wolf Pen uh, mm -hmm. and the Arts Center. Um, Grand Station is over on the, the freeway, um, Allen Honda. So those are those some of those big areas that you don't see anything in there. Um, and then you see the, the trails at Wolf Creek, Eastmark Apartments, uh, and then those streets that are there um, that are by, uh, off of Dartmouth. You take a ride in off of Dartmouth. And currently Windsor Point is still at still zoned to Pebble Creek. Yes, it is. And what about that Waterwood townhome? That is Pebble Creek as well. Okay. Yes, we're taking students in the area or that area and just kind of expanding it a little bit. Okay. You know, those, our, our thinking was too, that those kiddos can get right on Highway 6 and go south and we'll be going the opposite way of traffic, you know, both times. For Wednesday, we are not meeting here. We or, are. We are here. Yes. Where, where are we on Thursday? Here. Here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought. I thought. I thought we were splitting it up. For some no, reason. Okay. Uh, and oh, it's uh, my PAC meeting. There we go. Pack yeah. some. Up. <laughs> so uh, yes, we we are having two uh, community forums to gather feedback uh, from the community on this. Uh, the first one will be Wednesday of this week, the third. Uh, that will be at noon right here, and the next one uh, will be the day after the fourth, Thursday, October the fourth. That will be here as well, and that is scheduled to begin at 5:30. All of our other other evening meetings are scheduled to meet at six. As usual, it's a lot of stuff uh, in one shot. So, but okay, one more. It question. looks like it meets everything. So, go ahead. Sorry. No. One more question. I think it's the it's the gray, the Spring Creek. Yes, ma'am. Area. There's a little section in the northern part of town that's also gray. Is that that's current? That's current. Okay. Yes. That's no change. No, ma'am. Mm-hmm that one uh -huh. oh up up here is yes sir she's on that I 
I mean, I, I think it's worth noting that we all understand that nobody likes to move from where they are currently. Um, but the good thing is far and away the majority of kids that are moving zones are all getting to go to a brand new elementary school. And I, I think that's, that, that certainly is worth pointing out and there's not a, a whole lot of other changes uh, for the most part, although obviously we could probably dive into exact numbers in some of these sections, but I, I, I see it as positive. So I expect Riverbend to be an excellent elementary school. Yes, we do. So I, I would say initially good job uh, on this to, to you guys. Uh, no shoveling those numbers around is not an easy thing. And, uh, but the, the out years look good and that's really what we're the most concerned about, I think, more than anything else. So, especially for elementary schools. Thank you. Do you have any options that you looked at that you felt like accomplished our goals as well as this one and moved fewer kids? No, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we, uh, we, we've looked, uh, we, we worked on this for hours, so we don't have like 12 options or something in a drawer, you know, that's, you know, ready to go. That's great or anything like that. But what we would, when you go through the, the system and you move a neighborhood or you make a couple changes, those have ripple effects on the rest of the of the campuses there. So sometimes you'll move you'll move a neighborhood and it busts it, it you know, puts an elementary school at 900 kids. So, you know, well, we just we just move that back and we move something else around. So, so we looked at a, a couple of other options. Um, mo both of them um, moved more areas um, uh, around town, and um, I think both of them also had a, a larger geographic footprint. Uh, for uh, for River Bend, uh, in fact, one of them is probably, gosh, the geographically it probably made up a third of the district was was River Bend, um, and that's that's a lot for one school geographically wise. So, um, what we the reason why we brought one recommendation to the board was, yes, we can move some things around, and we're, we're happy to visit about that based on your feedback or feedback that we get, um, but in in our working through the process, um, the number of changes that we made didn't appreciably improve what we have brought before you. And it became, in our estimation, more and more disruptive to the entire community. So that's why we brought this one. But we're, as I said, we're, we're happy to, um, to look at this. And if you guys want us to come back and look at particular aspects of this, we're certainly happy to do that. From a transportation point of view, is that is there anything in here that for busing that does it make it less hectic, we, more hectic, or we, that's we did not analyze that at this time. Yeah, I can see it's going to get more hectic because we got another school. Um, but that's what I, the lack of disruption or the limit on the disruption, I think is that's one of the things that I like is that from a transportation standpoint. Is that those, that 2018 is a burger bear and it looks like that it's keeping. Yeah, it is. Maybe that will free up a couple of spots on that long parking lot during rush hour. Well, and I'm anxious to hear what the community feedback is. They're very good at helping analyze issues and, and finding things because all well, the people that live in these areas know the issues they face, things like that, uh, a lot more than, than we do. This isn't your last chance, so don't feel like you're on <laughs> no, the spot. <laughs> Nobody's, well, we can't. We don't want to anyway. But. So you'll have plenty of time to digest it and come back with questions and raise other issues. Okay. 
Anybody? Yeah. All right. Do you have anything? No. Sir. And see everybody on Wednesday at noon. I guess. Yeah. With that, we're adjourned.